What's going on everybody? Matt Tilford here. Just got back from Joshua Tree National Park. The best time to go is in the spring. The super bloom was insane. California's got so much rain over the past year that the desert was very, very colorful. In 1936, a Pasadena woman by the name of Minerva Hoyt had lobbied to protect Joshua Tree National Forest from uh, developers and cactus poachers. Her work really helped. Franklin D. Roosevelt joined in and protected the land. He called it a national monument. In 1994, Joshua Tree was turned into a national park. Joshua Tree is huge. There's over 1,235 square miles. There's two plates that come together, Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, and it's created some really, really amazing mountains and rock formations. It's actually where two deserts meet, the Colorado Desert and the Mojave Desert. This creates a really, really amazing habitat. There's over 813 plant life, uh, 46 reptiles, and 57 mammals, 58 if you're including me. I think there's over 250 bird species as well. It's home for two, two endangered species, the desert tortoise and the triple ribbed milk vetch. Some of the questions I'm asked often are, are these places you're going to accessible? And on paper, no, most of the time they're not, but you can make adaptions to make these places accessible. Joshua Tree's website states that it has one accessible trail, which isn't even actually in the national park. It's at the visitor center. I think it's about a mile loop on a paved path, which is awesome. And I love that national parks are being so inclusive, but people with disabilities want more. I want more. I've found that some of the, the trails are wide enough for the chair and they're flat enough and there are some some grades, grade changes, but they're not that bad. And with a little bit of help from a friend, family member, uh, another hiker on the trail, you can still get out there and do these things. I use a free wheel attachment that connects to the foot plate of my wheelchair and it's an extra a uh, wheel that takes the front casters off the ground and gives me a little bit more clearance. I'm also using a regular tent when I go out and do these adventures. It's a two-person tent with a vestibule, which comes in really good handy because I can put my wheelchair inside the vestibule area, zip it closed, and no dew gets on my chair. So when I wake up in the morning, everything's dry. I use a zero-degree bag when I'm camping. It's precautionary mostly, but I like to stay nice and warm and it's really hard to regulate body temperatures with spinal cord injury. Most campgrounds I go to are uh, pretty accessible and it's car camping, so we can take whatever we want. Here you can see that I'm just using a cast iron skillet. This wouldn't be something ideally uh, if you're backpacking just because weight, but when you're car camping it works great. <sighs> so about three miles into the trail in Joshua Tree, absolutely beautiful out here extremely flat the paths are wide so it's really easy to get around there's a couple soft spots where it's really sandy but you could still power through it so what's holding you back why aren't you planning something right now take a trip go explore the world it's all accessible to you with the right mindset if you want to make it happen you can make it happen